Hello, and if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. We are Remarkist, communities of fans who watch television shows and movies together virtually, but as if we're in the same room, gathered around the same television. We do this using the Clubhouse app. And we would love to have you join us for future watches. You can simply make an account on Clubhouse and search for our name, Remarkist, to find our club. Or if you'd like more information about the project as a whole, please visit Remarkist.com to learn lots more about who we are and what we do. As for our recordings, remember that we always get our episodes started but paused at the zero second mark and count down to pressing the play button together at the same time. That way, our experience can be as synced up as possible. You can pause this for a moment to get that set up, or if you're ready to go, let's get this thing started. Mark, and if we all are ready, you can grab your remote and we'll press play at the same time. Everybody good? Good to go. Awesome. Yep. So, we'll, so we'll start on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh no, my clubhouse is totally glitching. I read this as Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Same I'm Tiffany. sure that that was not unintentional. What's funny is it really does look like something that Jared Leto would wear. <laughs> oh, we started, huh? I to mine totally glitched out. What's our, what's our time? <laughs> we are at 35 seconds. <laughs> well, I started season three, episode five, so. <laughs> but I'm good now. The scene people used at the beginning of the pandemic. I love that Moyer's is freaking it, out just because Alexis has a cold. Qu question, is this is this Moira's real hair here or is this a wig? Do we ever see Moira's real hair? I think this, this is, is her real, real hair. hair. I have no idea. This is supposed to be her real hair. Okay. I believe so. And Moira in this situation is definitely like, like my aunt. If you're <laughs> sick, you better stay like eight miles away at least. <laughs> I love this it. Is Somebody how... has to say safe for David, and he's already like in the room. This is how I am with sick people. And if I'm sick, like right now, I don't want anybody near me because I do not want to make them sick. I mean, remember Paris? She was like, I don't like sick people. Yeah, that's how I am. I'm like Sheldon. I grabbed the Lysol spray and sprayed everywhere. She scared him. That's interesting. I have to say, I hate that sweater. It is I, not David's best sweater. I agree. Yeah. That is one of his worst sweaters. I wear it as a dress, but like, David... Mm -hmm. It's definitely like a sweater poncho for sure. Yeah, it's the poncho aspect of it that it just screams Jared Leto. Is Jared Leto like a poncho guy? Like, did I miss something? Yeah, I feel like I've seen him in a poncho. I'm sure that like that, whatever, wherever I feel like I've seen Jared Leto in a poncho, oh, the shit. costume designer also did.
by the way, we just we dropped a bunch of pictures of Jared Leto and Bon shows in in Discord. If anybody oh wants to check them out, I'll go. I, oh goodness, let me go try and. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what a caring mother! Oh my goodness, I love it. Oh goodness, the I just got to the poncho pictures. God. <laughs> this hits very different after 2020. Where did you put those pictures of uh, Jared Leto? They're in the in the Schitt's Creek thread um, in the Slate Events channel. Oh, the the okay. the Schitt's Creek no spoilers thread. Oh, I don't think I've applied to that. Yeah, just go into slate into slate watches and you'll see you should see the, the there's a little link into that into that thread <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's not a bad word, buddy.
I've seen that meme. <laughs> yeah, I just used it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> blouse I was going to say blouse Bob's run is just like it's so ridiculous. It's so joyful yes, to watch. I love it. I think I saw it. Did someone drop that gif in the spoilers thread on for Shit's Creek earlier today? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Those mannequins do have very large chests. Wow. It's a lot. That's <laughs> Stevie. <laughs> oh. 
I love her outfit. I do too, but Avian flew. <laughs> so so many of these outfits just look like Beetlejuice, though. I don't I don't know. I can't. I don't. I don't really <laughs> like all the black and white stripes and stuff. Okay, I just remember Catherine O'Hara did uh, Beetlejuice as well. Yeah, she did. But it, it reminds me of Be Beetlejuice's outfit. Yeah. But you just reminded me that oh, yeah, she yeah. did that. I was like, wait. Oh, Roland. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, 
That would give me the heebie-jeebies that she just put her dirty hands on a raisin and put it in my drink. <laughs> that was definitely a fun one. That's a good episode. I love how they kept kept getting mad at Johnny when he literally was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any of these things. Yeah. <laughs> Has everybody... Um... Or have any of you had a chance to take a look at your Leto Poncho? Oh so my drunk. goodness. There. I did. I and like, <laughs> once you see them, you're like, oh yeah, he's like a poncho guy. Yeah, I mean, once you see For him, sure. you're like, oh, I've seen, I've seen Jared Leto. I don't think I've seen him in a poncho before. <laughs> I've seen because, him Because like, I, I really don't follow Jared Leto that much. I really don't. But I mean, when you see him in a poncho, it's like, oh, makes sense. And make this. I sure. feel like you don't need to follow Jared Leto to just some I really see him don't think I've ever seen him in a poncho. Sorry. I really don't think I. Sorry, I'm getting up the preamble for the next episode. Stacy's not here, so I am going to I'm going to act as the substitute host. Thank you. We're happy to have you. No spoilers, but this is also a very good episode. I like this episode. I'm remembering it now. I don't remember this episode. I don't think. Maybe. I don't know. Are you are you sick, Kendra? Yes, I am. Again. Aww. I'm very angry about it. I remembered the last episode because I so relate to Moira with the sickness. <laughs> Do you have COVID? Well, I had COVID before, about a month ago, and I had it moderately, but I got over it 
And then I got sick a few days and it's exactly, I feel exactly like it did before. And it's following the same like progression that it did before. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Cause I know you've been like really working at not getting COVID because you've got some autoimmune stuff that you're oh, yeah. really a little scared of. But I got it and I mean, I was fine. Let's do this. Hello, everybody. All of you joining us for the first time, welcome. This is Remarcus. We are communities of fans who watch television shows and movies together virtually, but as if we're in the same room gathered around the same television. Tonight, we're watching Schitt's Creek Season 2, Episode 6, starring Dan Levy, Gordon Levy, Catherine O'Hara, and Annie Murphy, currently streaming on Netflix. Those of us up here on the couch can chat when we watch, as if we're creating a sort of DVD-style commentary track. Um, but it is best to keep those remarks focused on the art and remember to differentiate the stories we love from the artists who helped create them. For the current timestamp during the watch, you can ask any of our moderators, either vocally or via text. Tonight's room is a chatty level three, which means chatting is encouraged, but we try to keep it during the breaks in dialogue. Hold off any longer thoughts until after the watch. And if the chatting is still too much for you, feel free to turn down the volume. And this is a spoiler-free zone, so assume that there are first-time viewers here, and please, no spoilers. Also, the event's being recorded and archived on our YouTube channel, so if you don't want your remarks to be public, don't speak or simply don't come up onto the couch. Okay, so let's get our episode started, but paused at the zero second mark because we're going to press play at the same time on the count of three. Is everyone ready? Yes. Ready. 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 Great. Ready. Great. Here we go. One. Two, three. I was kind of disappointed you didn't say Tony Shalhoub. Oh, yes, I remember this episode. It is a good. <laughs> oh my god, her laugh. <laughs> it wouldn't kill other people to plant them, but it would her. This is a cute little argument, I gotta admit. I feel for Alexis for whatever reason.
(laughs) 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 Who would buy those kinds of mannequins? What is the person who bought going to do with them? I'm worried. I mean, they are insanely busty. Oh, I love Moira's shoes. This whole look. It's fabulous. So weird. (laughs) Her jacket looks like a car seat. Like a like an English race car car scene. <laughs> You know, the crazy thing is that I've heard the actor who plays Ray, like, speak, and he doesn't even have, like, a thick, like, accent like that at all. I thought we got salt from, like, the ocean? It comes from the ground? We have it all over here in the lake. (laughs) Cleveland has big uh, underground salt mines and stuff. I believe there's big, huge tunnels under the city. We... An area of Oklahoma that has salt plains. And I mean, it's just salt for as far as the eye can see. Whose blouse is that hanging on the door? Because it doesn't look like anything any of them would wear. I think it's Alexis. Yeah, Alexis, maybe. Yeah, it's like a boho. Like, she wears stuff like that sometimes. I'm very curious where David got this sweater. Here it is! I thought it was this too. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> exactly. <It's> terrifying. <laughs> this is oh what, my god. This is what it's like Men when my wearing beards is just like women wearing too much makeup 
or whatever. <laughs> He's got like a little baby face too. It's very jarring. Th that's exactly what my husband when he shaves his beard. Oh He's my like, yeah, goodness! This is how I feel anytime Very my husband shaves. Eric and I might have had this entire exchange the first time he shaved. How is this shaved. guy? How is this guy not playing Clark Kent, <laughs> Superman, he, in something? Yeah, he, are he, looks like, he looks because like Henry Cavill so is the best. I don't know. Tom Welling did a really good job in Smallville. It's the lips. He has like baby lips. Like a little like curved and like smushed in. That's what it is. <laughs> I love Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie. <laughs> Is he really the face of Blouse Barn? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh david <laughs> <laughs> oh 
his manager should have known you can't give David a credit card without explicit instructions. A non sir. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that that they will bring like some change to this town over the course of these seasons and and that we're starting to see it with something like this. That it's like, you know, that you kind of come into this assuming like how are you know, how is this town going to change this family? But it's starting to look like maybe this family could potentially start changing this town a little. I totally yeah, agree. Yeah, it better. His, also, he's, he, he's got the like whiter area of the lower half of his face is, is whiter. This whole thing is weirding me out. Like, even his voice now sounds different to me. Yeah, he just seems like a completely different human being. Yeah, like, like he does, I know he does, it's the same person, but yeah, my brain there's can't There's just nothing connect. about him that, yeah, there's just nothing about him that seems like the same actor, the same character, the same anything. I mean, that's the, I think that's what makes it funny, but. I mean, I think he's super hot. Oh, for sure he is, but it's still weirding my brain out. Oh, yeah, he's Objectively, he is, but like. Not for me. Like, objectively, he's very handsome. His arms are still hairy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious how you're feeling about the the beard gone, Tiffany. Oh, I still wouldn't kick him out of bed for eating crackers. Oh. 
That was a horrible visual. <laughs> <laughs> David is awesome. You what? <laughs> <laughs> That was a beautiful moment. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> That was, uh, that, that was, it's fun because we're watching them in, in pairs, you know, you can, you can watch, you watch both of them, then you kind of can have your, your favorite. That was my favorite of the night. <laughs> oh, that was good. I would like to know who these write-off people are. That, that whole write-off thing was absolutely just genius genius comedy i loved it every second of it it's not a write off yeah i mean just the, just the fact that he doesn't know what a write off how a write off works it's just very funny it's just a, it's such a funny weird i mean like and then it clicks and he's a like, well, yeah. yeah, why don't they call it a tax write-off? Yeah, I mean, just it a is. Ta tax, hu tax humor, I mean, like, shouldn't be that funny. That That's what makes that so brilliant. <laughs> like, even I don't really understand what a write-off is, but, like, I feel like 
I would grasp enough that you can't just, like, buy yourself things and say that, like, it's for your business. Because, like, that seems shady, David. Well, you definitely can't do that, but just the idea that he kind of just thinks that, like, nobody, like, it just, it just ends up being free because of it is just very funny. Nobody Nothing pays for David. Nope, nobody. I, David I has never had a job. He does not understand this at all. people. <laughs> so funny. Um... Oh man, and Mutt, man, with that face. Also, just it was funny that the, like the lower half, the lower half of his face was like lighter than the upper part of his face, which is just you know that's true. You know, you don't shave for a while, and you've got like half your face is a different color. Well, <laughs> that <a> actor, <laughs> I mean, that was probably a big thing for yeah. him to shave like that because he always always has facial hair i know and i mean it, you know he just he that facial hair it it really makes him a, gives him a very different mood and tone as a person as probably as an actor i mean he suddenly just looks like first of all 10 years younger he looks much younger um and and looks like like soap opera material, which, you know, probably does. I mean, I would imagine he probably doesn't want those two things, right? He probably wants to look more rugged, or I would imagine he probably feels more comfortable, um, you know, looking a little bit more rugged. Um, but that, that, the fact that he did that for the role is funny. And, and again, like, just that's just really interesting and very creative humor you know that like it's it's funny in a very unexpected way i i, I uh you just don't see that kind of that kind of humor well, I, know. I feel like without the beard he looks less like he would live in a barn yep yeah of course i mean like, he really he doesn't look like he would live yeah, in I mean, a he, barn like, he I looks yeah I mean, he looks he looks like a young like a young yeah like a young model I just realized too how brilliant to add depth to the storyline where it looks like they were going to end up breaking up, but it wasn't just the breakup storyline. They added that in there and it made it so much richer, so much more interesting. Yes, totally. And more yeah. than more than that, I feel like the actual breakup where there are no words, like for like a minute, those two actors are just doing everything with their eyes, everything, like everything. everything. And I feel like it's almost, it's almost more raw to see it when like without a beard on his face. Yep. Cause like you can actually see his whole face, like making every movement, you know, in the, in the way that she has to as well. And I just, uh, I think it's so good. Like it's, it's so interesting what they did there like it's super funny but it's also just so um oh, it's just so human it's amazing yeah well, I it's, it's funny that like he looked more like what she would have dated probably previously totally yes but she was like attracted to him at first because he was like the rugged gruff you know dirty <laughs> guy yeah, I mean, he kind of has, you know, he kind of has a little bit more now of, like, you could, you could, you could wrap your brain around the idea that the mutt before pre that pre shave mutt was the kind of guy who picked on who picked on on Ted, and and you know, and like like kind of gave him a hard time in high school, post shave post shave mutt looks like he could have been picked on in high school. Well, that's what I was gonna say. It looks like he could have been Ted. <laughs> I mean he really I mean he looks just like Ted now. I mean he has that same vibe, yep. which is what which was what kind of she was into about Ted, that he fit that he fit that that thing. It does get me it does does get me wondering like is that is there is there anything about that the shaving that was in any way if it if it like if it may if it accelerated something that was all, like a problem that was already 
happening were a them. growth that was happening in yeah. Alexis. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what um, to say about the whole beard thing because I mean, I don't know. Maybe she doesn't like change, so maybe like that's a thing about it. But I feel like the reason that things started fizzling was because he started out as unattainable, and then he became like well, like the. He was like the side chick, and so it was like really exciting and like not good for her. And she was like attracted to that because she was with Ted while she was like hooking up with Mutt. And then they got into a relationship, and it was like not as exciting, and so it sort of like fizzled. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering too. Stage, and she's like, uh, this is too much for me. Now you're not like, first of all, this isn't even as cool as it used to be, and now you're like different. So, like, what's <laughs> oh. happening? I completely agree, Lily. It was she, yeah. she was all about the chase. Yeah, and we were talking about how early this season that um early this season <clears throat> uh he there was a vibe about him that felt a little more clingy. Felt a little more clingy, buying her bikes, doing all these things that like ve- felt very different from this like aloof, unattainable character that he had first season and now i'm realizing that that was purposeful i i I think that that was deliberate to to get him more into her uh and show us that he's really 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 into her um and how that actually um scares alexis a little bit I, I don't think that these two are over. Let's just let 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 me be clear. Let <laughs> let me be clear about that. They are not over. It, um, it sounds she's like got, it sounds like he was. They deemed him a little, like in Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, I think I so. But like last week. they did. They definitely did. There's no <laughs> doubt. Like in the er, the first few episodes, he felt real dean. We were we were we were mentioning that. But but I I do think that that um. I do think that Alexis has more growing to do because I think that 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 part of this is also um, her, you know, her. I I think that she is she needs to realize like I think she's scared of something. I, I think she's scared of something. Commitment. Um, I think she's scared. I think she's definitely scared of commitment. I think that, like, you know, I think that some of this behavior from him this season has made her feel a little pressured, a little smothered. And, and, and while, you know, there's certainly an argument to be made about things that he, that, that he can do to not make her feel the, that that way. I do think that like, you know, she's got she still has some learning to do about what it means when somebody cares about you. Um and and I think she's afraid of that because she's never really experienced it before. I think her and David are really in that boat right now, especially. Um Oh, definitely also, like, David too. De- for sure. Definitely. David is like sunken he's like at the bottom of like the mariana trench with that right now like he needs some help but you know, yeah like when when they were having that conversation <laughs> when they were having that conversation in the bedroom or in 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 yeah in the bedroom in the in the motel room <laughs> um at the end I, I i don't know maybe it's just me but i i sensed that some of what she was talking about in regards to her and mutt that that he was actually um that it was landing on him in terms of uh, of uh, Stevie? of him and Stevie, yeah. Maybe so. I I didn't I didn't really pick up on that, but something you were saying yeah. about Mutt, like being like this, like sort of like dark broody type of vibe to him, like, and then turning like really clingy. Like my sort of feeling about that that is like, well, he was with like Twyla, and he wasn't really happy with her, and he had a crush on Alexis, but he couldn't really do anything about it. So he was just like depressed <laughs> and also like just like not and then as soon as he was like out of not necessarily depressed just just figure I guess but and then as soon as like Alexis was like attainable for him his like actual like personality came out because I feel like he was just like not he wasn't really happy with Twilight and he wanted to be with Alexis but he couldn't and so he was just very like 
I'm dark and mysterious, but really, I just can't say what I feel about you, so I'm just gonna be like, huh, all grumbly, but that's what, like, it was just, like, a, an aggressive shift between, you're unattainable, so I'm gonna, like, pretend I don't like you, too, I really like you, so I'm gonna be here, like, around you all the time, and, like, come dote on you, and, like, do all this, and we're gonna get, ride bikes together, like, the very, like, st- like, stark cut between those two, like, personalities, but I think it's just because he was in a something he actually enjoyed being in. Yeah. I think. I think I think it's a little bit more to I think you know, he says in that conversation which I never remembered but it's so astute or he says, you know, like something about like like the the fact that they're like they're getting to know each other and so that is actually useful for you know whether or not they should be together and so there's something about their relationship that's really interesting that like shows never do this like where the act of actually getting to know each other better which is you know what a healthy like what happens in a healthy relationship is actually showing them both that they don't belong together and so they're coming to the conclusion through the act of actually getting to know each other. And she even says to David, like, I let him know me. And that's not something that she's ever done. And so the fact that it ends in this heartbreak for her or breaking up is a new, is a new sensation for her where she's just like, Oh, I've never, I've never been broken up with in this way because I never, I never had anyone know me. So it like hurts more that that person wasn't the right person you know like that it wasn't working and i think like it's really it's kind of interesting to watch two characters you know be attracted to one another and i don't i don't know if i agree with like like you know like personality changes or anything like they like that maybe maybe it's there maybe it's not but like i just think that like they actually got to know each other and we got to know them as a viewer you know what i mean and like we got to see who they really are and who they really are is like not really compatible with each other and i think that's really cool to show a relationship that way because like nobody did anything wrong it's just through the act of getting to know one another like she learned how to open up and like actually let someone know her which is really cool and is growth for the character and she even says it out loud but we also kind of learn like oh mutt's not like the rugged guy like only that we met like he's he's all these other things and all these other things aren't really like meshing with who Alexis is. And so they're going to go their separate ways. I think it's they're really, going to go their separate uh, ways really permanently. Nice. They're going to grow their, go their separate ways permanently. I think right now they're going their separate mm, ways for a reason. But, 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 but do you think that the story of these two characters as love interests is over now? I can't answer that because I've seen the whole oh, series. Cause you've seen the series <clears throat> who hasn't seen the series. MJ, have you seen the series? I have not. She- Shelly, no. have you seen the series? No, I haven't. So, what do we do? We think that their that their relationship is over. There are five. There, there are no. Is there how many? Se- there's three more seasons after this. Um, I personally don't think that their relationship is over. Over. Um, I agree. I like uh, Diana's views on it because I think that's super smart and I actually agree with that. But I don't think they're over over. Well, I mean, it just I think just from a narrative perspective, it's kind of an it would be an uh, I mean, we're only six episodes into their actual relationship. So to play this relationship off at with those kind of stakes, like what you're talking about, Diana, I just think is a little feels a little premature. Right. Like that, like that's, it's very cool, but like, I would expect that to happen at the end of a series, you know, or at the end of a really big milestone, not six episodes into a relationship. Like I haven't really gotten to know them very well in in the relationship and they are both, they do both seem to be important characters on the show, which just has me feeling like, well, this is, this is a, this is a milestone in their larger story. Which I have to imagine, I have to imagine that it includes, that it includes more romance. Even if in the end they, they come to recognize what they're recognizing here, which would make this the start of that recognition, 
or um, or if they or if they come to realize something else that they that they that they do that they are compatible in some other way. Do but we it just would know... be, to me, it, I feel like it would just be weird if it was like, oh, really, only six episodes? Now these two characters stay together or stay on the show as main characters on the show who have no, who have no, like, love story at all anymore? Hmm. It, it would be certainly different if it hap if they do it and they pull it off well, I'd be like, wow. But I, I just can't, I, it's hard for me to imagine. Do we know how much time has passed since they started dating? Because I know sometimes, like, it's, like, the next day and sometimes it's not. I was, do, do we know, like, how long it's actually been? I don't. But I don't. But in terms of a viewer, that that the answer to that shouldn't matter too much because it really should be about how we feel the relationship has progressed. And as a viewer, I don't feel like I've spent that much time with their relationship but like maybe that could be that could be because we're watching two at a time um but i'd still think six episodes for them to be together you know because really they got together on episode one because it was episode the the finale the finale of last season that they you know hooked up for the first time so this was really the beginning this this season's the beginning of are these two going to be romantically involved and here at episode six it seems to be suggesting no they aren't but the way that they suggest it is in a really big kind of like very emotional way that i feel typically is reserved for much bigger romantic um like it like, like typically that that is a payoff that comes with like a much longer drawn out exploration of two characters and their relationship and i don't know if six if i would say six episodes was, was enough for me I, if this is truly the end i kind of feel like though it's not just six episodes because we've known since like really early season one that she's like attracted to him and he's attracted to her and so i feel like we had a full season where that doesn't play out and it's like a it's like it's just kind of there and like the last episode mm -hmm. of the first season, like there's that moment and then like Ted comes back and it's like the, you know, the spell is broken. So I kind of feel like these two have been will they won't they for a while. And then, you know, and then they get together in the first episode here in the season. And it for me, it's kind of like plays out like, you know, you know, there's a person that you know you're attracted to and you just like have all these like imaginations of like who like what they really are who they really are and you just like that's all you can get to because you don't you don't have the opportunity to to date them or you know whatever like he was taken she was taken like all that stuff and i feel like once they finally like they clearly wanted to hook up like of course so i feel like once that happened and then they like sort of went for it they learned really quickly that they're really incompatible and you know i think that was set up pretty nicely like you know the last few episodes we get we get him trying to get to know her with the bike and all that stuff and like her like being like ah oh, this isn't me you know and then we get this episode she's like hey like i really like talking and he's you know and he's not into it and so it's like they kind of keep missing each other and i think i think it's i don't know it just like makes sense to me that they wouldn't last very long because it seemed like just attraction at first and then they get together and like i i just don't we haven't seen them be really compatible as a couple in any way i don't think right I, so, I agree with that you know? but i do but i do feel like that's a great place to start a story about two characters who are finding out who they actually are especially alexis because i mean i think most would agree that like that she is dis she is discovering aspects of herself being in this very strange place that you know is out, outside of her own comfort zone that that should tell me that like over the course of this larger story that she's going to learn much more about herself so it seems like 
it 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 seems reasonable then to assume that yes all of the things that had her attracted to him probably more so her attracted to him than her, him attracted to her but i'd say probably the, the same way goes in the other way that that those are the things that are not that are not really compatible and that what they wanted from one another is not is not doesn't really work because it's not really real but that 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 just feels like it's a good place to begin a story of two people like finding out who they are and discovering that they still do like care about the other person in a new deep way that they couldn't have possibly done before because they hadn't grown to that yet that I mean, I because I because I understand that we've been teased with this idea of them being together for a full season. I would argue that it wasn't deep enough for me that I would like that I you know like I don't feel like there were enough scenes between the two of them um, that that suggested like I just think that one season of that of them like kind of working together and kind of had a crush on each other and then six episodes of them being together like the payoff of this like kind of emotional we're not right for each other ever um to me is just not a big enough payoff and that's the reason why i kind of feel like it feels like maybe it's the beginning of something new that three seasons from now could have a much bigger payoff which by the way could still be we aren't right for each other um but seems odd if it's three more seasons these two characters don't ever have any more of a flirtation with the possibility that they could be right for each other at, especially as alexis it continues to grow if she continues to grow i assume she's going to continue to grow as i imagine david will also continue to grow um that that that's it i mean it i agree with you that it makes sense that they have ended it here i'm just saying it's not a big enough payoff for me if that's really truly the end for them like it's it seems weird that it would be that it would be given that much emotional weight and i'm okay with with uh, this beginning the chapter of something new between the two of them well i think I think it's there's a lot of emotion. I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I I think there's a lot of emotional weight because Alexis is like one of the core four, you know, members of this cast. Like we're seeing everything through, you know, the Rose family. It's really about them. And so it's I think it's a huge emotional moment for Alexis almost only because she's the one who's sort of holding up the mirror to her personality and her life and being like, Oh wow. Like, you know, this person broke my pattern, this person, you know, like actually allowed me to um, be myself. And then myself wasn't the person that, that ultimately is compatible with him. And that is a really rough pill to swallow if you've never done that before you know what i mean like so i kind of feel like her growth is the most important here and it's her realizing that that you actually have to uh, you know be vulnerable with someone and allow them to see you and then maybe they're like you know they're not right for you and so it it is a really it's it feels like free fall like it feels really terrible and i do think david is kind of going through that too you know like he's you know he's got this friendship with stevie that i feel like you know is a very um it's a close one you know because she's she's able like she can see all of his you know his demons as well and like you know whether or not she chooses to stick around as his friend or otherwise is like you know sort of yeah, but I, that story has not there. ended. That that love right, story right. has but, not ended. But, but what I mean is we're seeing it through his point of view. So, like, mm -hmm. his point of view is, will this person stay or go because they're getting to know who I am? And I feel like that's what we're getting from Alexis. Yeah, yeah. Will this person stay or go because they're learning who I am? 
Oh, right, right. Okay, then that's fine. That, then that makes sense to me, but that still means that there is a love story there because I, I think that what we're seeing here between Alexis and, and Mutt is very similar to what we saw with David and, and Stevie. And, and the thing is, is that there, is, there are still feelings there. It is so very clear that there are still feeling, feelings there. There are still feelings that Stevie has for David that she has not fully come to terms with. And I think that there's probably probably still something that David is trying to understand about himself and, and potentially feelings for her. It, like I said, it might still end in we are best just as friends, but it doesn't feel like it's over yet. And that's that's really all I'm saying about Alexis and Mutt, it just feels weird if I'm supposed to if I'm supposed to feel like this is over. For one reason, it's an odd place for something to be for for in a narrative for something to get to have that sort of final over thing. It's the middle of the season, right? Like uh, like uh, I like if this happened at the end of season 2, like like and we had more of a build up, we saw more of them trying to make it work and it not being compatible moments of small victories that has us that have us thinking oh yes okay cool it is working and then a fallback even worse and you know and and that build happened to the end of this season i think i'd probably feel like it did pay off but it felt too short it felt like in the middle of the season it didn't have that payoff which then has me feeling the same way that i feel about stevie and and david which is Oh, this story is not over. It can't possibly be over because it wasn't built up enough for me to feel that sense of finality. I totally agree. So, you know, that's how I'm feeling. I will say I, 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 I'm so darn invested in these characters. I mean, the, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly want more from all of the, these storylines, you know, because, yeah, because, I mean, I feel like there's so much more story to mine between all of them. Well, I, I think there's a, there's sort of a, a main theme that runs through for all of these characters and what I, and I mean the Rose family and like, their main issue, besides like, you know, uh, losing everything they have, is that they never took any time to connect with anyone. They have nobody. And so it's really interesting to watch them all flounder individually trying to find connection with other individuals, like outside their family. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's the theme, if I have to like really look at it. Like, I, I, I don't know if, I don't know if romance is that, is that important. You know what I mean? Like, I think actually all of these characters are just trying to connect with the people around them and it's going to kind of come out in different ways. Even, you know, even um, like Moira with Jocelyn, like she's just trying to like, you know, like ingratiate herself to the town in ways that make sense for her. And she completely gets it wrong most of the time. And it's, it's funny to watch, but I think that's what's happening is that they've like, none of them have ever connected with anyone really. And that's kind of their journey is to figure out whether or not they're going to make like, you know, an external family out of this town in some way and like learn to actually connect with people other than themselves and get to know themselves in the process. And so I feel like every relationship they make is in pursuit of that. And it's, it's interesting to watch. So I, like, I don't, I don't really see all of these love interests or, you know, like I, I see them sort of as a means to an end in a way, like, will this make the character figure out how to connect with another person, you know? Yeah. I also think that romance and love and love story can actually have that end. Um, and, and when I say romance, I know that it's, it like, it's easy to, to immediately go to the idea that these two will get married. Um, but I do think that like in a healthy romance, um, 
which can happen between, you know, two, like, which can happen between any characters. I mean, like, we could, like, it, based on how you're describing their, you know, these characters' connection that they have with one another, we could say the same kind of arc could come for the Moira and Jocelyn characters. Um, not like that they would that they would hook up, but that they would find some sort of deep, deep connection. And if Mutt and Alexis continue their relationship, not doesn't mean that they're going to actually continue to have sex, but if they continue their relationship and it gets deeper, as as a as this you know sort of family that we're that we're hoping that they're going to, to build, then that will actually feel like an extension of their story for me. I don't need them to I don't need them to to like fall in love and for him to propose to her for me to feel like that's like that's um, uh, a fulfilled storyline. But the idea that but the I guess the finality that this that they gave to them breaking up here didn't feel that strong to me because I just felt like these two have more of a story between the two of them. And, and it may, that story may be platonic, but I would still characterize it, odd, oddly enough, I would still characterize it as a, as a romance, even if they end up, if they end up staying platonic for the rest of the series. If that relationship finds a really, really deep, deep, deep care for one another. If those, if it doesn't, which is the part that I have a hard time imagining, <laughs> um, if it doesn't, I find that I will find that weird because I would be like, how can you have two characters be so important in the series? And, and that's it. Like middle of season of this season that that's they're, they're, they, they're not interacting anymore and they're not like growing together as people and finding a deeper connection with one another. Does that make sense? Does to me. Well, it is eight. Um, this was uh, this was a lot of a lot of fun. Great, great two episodes. I like the second episode a bit more than the first, um, and some good conversation. Uh, we are back tomorrow for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We're in season two. Things are getting exciting. The master has not shown his face. <laughs> so, we have uh, figured out why you don't like the master. Why? Because you're a vampire. Oh, because I'm... <laughs> yeah. That's why you think everyone's going to turn into a vampire? Right, right, right. And I, because I'm, I'm very competitive. I don't want any other vampires um, stealing my, my thunder. Yeah, you and the master can't survive together, so that's why you don't right. like it. Right, right. <laughs> um, no, uh, so... Uh, tomorrow, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we're back on Wednesday for more Shit's Creek. We'll find out whether or not these two have more of a storyline or if this is truly the end. Truly, truly the end for Alexis mm -hmm. and Mutt. I don't think it felt that uh, way, especially uh, since she wasn't sure, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, on Thursday, we've got more Buffy, and then on Friday, we are off. Just to remind everyone, Friday, there is no Slate show. We do our bunheads on Saturday mornings. That's how we do bunheads now, is Saturday morning, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m., 12 p.m. Eastern time. That's a great show. You should definitely join us. You should definitely join us for all of these. Erinan? Yes. Are you having a good birthday? I'm having a phenomenal birthday. I'm really glad we could we could uh, celebrate with you. Ah, uh, me, me too. Like it's meant the world. Thank you, everyone. 
Happy birthday. All right. Thanks Happy birthday, Erin. I'm, I'm heading out. Thanks for hosting. We'll see everybody tomorrow. See everybody tomorrow. Bye. Have a good night, John. Bye. Bye. Have a good Happy night. birthday, Bye. Bye, everyone. Happy birthday. Bye.